In this video, I will demonstrate configuring the SD-WAN device for the remote access hidden functionality via vManage so that we can terminate the RA client onto the SD-WAN device. And once the RA client connects to the RA hidden, we will verify if RA client can access the enterprise application server in the enterprise data center via SD-WAN fabric. Lastly, we'll see how the Umbrella 6 security policies can be applied to the RA client traffic to make sure that the RA client securely access the internet. This is our SD-WAN lab setup. We have the SD-WAN controllers, we manage, we bond, and we smart into the public cloud. In the data center, we have the Catalyst 8500 device as SD-WAN device, which will be integrated for the remote access head end capability. We have Cisco I server for the RA users authentication and authorization. We are using CA server for the certificate management between the SD-1 RA headend and the remote access client users. And for the RA clients, we have the Windows machines with the Cisco AnyConnect client installed on it. So let's get started. This is our vManage controller. So first thing we'll check different feature template that we have configured for the SD-1 device. Let's go to the navigations, configurations, the templates. Go to the feature templates. Now under the feature template, we have several con feature templates configured for this C8500 12X device. The first is the VPN0 template, which is the transport VPN. Second is the transport VPN interface template. Third is the service VPN template. And fourth is the service VPN interface template. So basically these four templates are used for configuring the device for a SD-WAN functionality. Then we have the SIG and the SIG credential templates, which are basically to create an auto so IPsec tunnel between the Catalyst 8500 device and the umbrella portal. And the, for the crucial template for this solution is the Aron CLI template, uh, which configure the RA functions to the SD-WAN device. So let's look at the detailed configuration under this Aron CLI template. I'll go to the view or edit options for this Aron CLI template. So in this Aron CLI template, basically we have to configure the DLCP IP pool for the remote access clients. So the IP address will be used from this DSCP IP pool in order to assign an IP address to the RA client. You define the radius server group. So in this case, we are using the Cisco I server in this AAA server group. AAA configurations for the authentication and authorization, which will use the, the AAA server group, which we have defined here in the previous section. We have trust point configured for the CA certificate management. So this is our CA server IP address under this trust point. Then we have configured the IK2 based proposals policy and the IKV2 profile. And we also have the IPsec profile. So the IPsec profile is using the IK2 based profile, which is configured in the previous section. So both the IK2 as well as the IPsec profile is needed for the remote access IPsec uh, tunnel terminations or the negotiations. And lastly, we have the virtual templates, which are basically the logical interfaces uh, used by the remote access clients to terminate the IPsec tunnel onto the SD-WAN device. So now by using all these feature templates, I will configure this Catalyst 8500 device as an SD-WAN device using the device template here. So in the interest of time, I already have created this device template. Go to the extreme right and click on edit. So under the transport VPN, uh, we are uh, we have selected the transport VPN and the transport VPN interface template. Under the service VPN, we are using the service VPN template. So now I'm going to attach this device template to the Catalyst 8500 device. Select the Catalyst uh, 8500 12X device under the available device, and then attach this device template to the 8500 device. Click on next. If you click on the left hand. 8512x you'll see all the configurations that has been generated out of these feature templates and then just click on the configure device now the view manage is configuring the device and this status message should turn to be successful now you can see the device is now already configured for the uh, sdn functionality so now i'm going to push the remote access hidden configuration onto this sdn device by using the Aron CLI templates so let's go to the configurations and templates i'll look out for my 8500 device template and i'm going to edit this template in order to attach 
<clears throat> the add-on CLI template for the RA functionality. And the add-on CLI template option is uh, available under the additional templates. So under the additional templates, if you see the CLI add-on template options here, go to the drop-down and select the add-on CLI template and I'm going to update this device template. The next thing is this will create the configurations for the RA functionality. And then I'm going to push this configuration to the sd wan device. The configuration is pushed successfully. Now the sd wan device is ready for the remote access handheld functionality. Now I will configure this sd wan device for the internet as well using the umbrella supporter, right? So I'm going to push the umbrella C configuration onto this device. So let's go back to the navigations configurations template. Edit my Catalyst 8512X device template. Edit options, part of the transport VPN option of Cisco Secure Internet Gateway, which is basically for the SIG tunnel. Add the SIG tunnel options under the VPN 0. Now this is available on the left hand side panel. Go to the drop down, select the umbrella SIG tunnel, SIG template, select the umbrella SIG template. Now go to the additional template and we have to add the SIG credentials as well. So we'll go to the drop down and select the SIG credentials. I'm going to update this device template. So the next thing it will do is to generate the configurations for the umbrella SIG. So vManage is now pushing this umbrella SIG tunnel configurations to the sd wan device. So it has generated the config and it is trying to push the configurations to the device and it is success. So now this Catalyst 8500 device is ready for the remote access head-in functionality as well as for the internet breakout using the Cisco Umbrella SIG. Now let's do some uh, pre-check verifications on the sd wan device. I'll go back to the navigation tools, SSS to the Catalyst 8500 device. First thing is I'm going to check the interface headers. There are two tunnels configured on this device. So one is the tunnel 100000 transport VPN 0 template and the tunnel 10001 is nothing but the umbrella seek tunnel, IPsec tunnel, and which is in up-down state. The umbrella thick tunnel takes around six to eight minutes to come up. In the meantime, uh, we'll verify the crypto session details. Now I can see tunnel 1001, which is umbrella thick IPsec tunnel in down state. So we do not see any virtual access uh, tunnel which is nothing but the IPsec tunnel. Currently, there are no RE clients connected to this, connected to this device. Now, we do not have any virtual access interface. Now, we'll wait for umbrella seek tunnels to come up. Let's wait for two, three minutes, and this tunnel will come up. Let's verify the tunnel status again. I can see the umbrella seek tunnel is also up. All right, so another check that we can do is on the uh, umbrella portal. So let's quickly check on the umbrella site. So this is our umbrella portal. Once you see login to the umbrella portal, uh, you can check the tunnel status under the deployments, network tunnels. So here in this case, this is the tunnel in active state for Catalyst 8500 device. You can also verify the device IP address as well. So this is on the tunnel side. Now, since we are already on the umbrella portal, let's look at the web policies that we have configured for the RA users. So you, under the policies and policy components, under the content categories, we have the default web setting here. So there are some categories, the content categories that we have selected to be blocked. We have blocked the gambling and games or even other content that have been blocked. Go to the web policy here on the left hand side and under the default web policy, those content categories as a rule have been blocked. So rule action is blocked. Now the intent of having this web policy is that if our users try to access the gaming, then it should be blocked by the umbrella support. The next thing we will verify the Cisco IS configurations. Now let's review the Cisco IS configurations. So there are four things that you need to configure on the Cisco IS server. The first is the adding the Cisco SD WAN device on the IS server. So let's navigate to the administration network resources and under it, the network devices. So we have added this Catalyst 8500 12X device. Let's quickly look at what configuration goes into this. So while adding the device, we just have to provide the device name, the IP address of the interface. So the interface on the Catalyst 8500 device, which is connecting to the I server. So you have to add that IP here. Then the device profile or the make of the device. And then in the radius uh, authentication setting, you have to provide share secret key. So basically this is the secret key that will be used by the device while authenticating himself with the Cisco I server. Now, second thing is the creating the username and password for the RA clients. Navigate back to the administration under the administration identity management and the identities. 
So here we have added the, uh, the RA client users. This is creating the local database onto the Cisco I server. But this is an optional uh, task. If you have, let's say, area integrated with the Cisco I server, then you don't need to add the uh, identities for the RA users here. But in our case, uh, in our lab, we have added the local database for the RA client's username and password. Now, third thing is we have to create the authorization profile for the RA client. So we'll go back to the navigations here under the work centers. Go to the posture or under the posture the policy elements so once you click on the policy elements on the left hand side just scroll down and look out for the authorization profile options here we have created the any connect profile here for the ra clients so let's look at what configuration is inside this profile so we are given the profile name here access type accept the network profile for cisco and the important part here is the front uh, attributes for the ra clients in this attribute, what we have added is the, the IP address mask for the RA client IP addresses. The second parameter is the service VPN, which service VPN this uh, RA clients land into once they get terminated onto the sd one RA head end device. Next parameter is the unnumbered virtual template interface or the logical interface, which RA client will be used to initiate that IPsec tunnel. So basically, RA client will use the virtual template 100 interface onto the Catalyst 8500 device to create an IPsec tunnel request. And this is the DCP IP pool from which the IP address will be assigned to the RA clients. The next thing is the full tunnel or the split tunnel option here. So in this case, accept any routes. It means that it is going to push the default route to the RA clients, which is nothing but the full tunnel option here. And lastly, the DNS options that you can define the DNS server and uh, IP address here. Now, once you configure this authorization profile and user identities, now you bind those user identity or the RA client identity with the authorization profile. For that, we'll go to the policy sets here. Under the policy sets, uh, I'm using the default uh, policy sets. Under the default, we have the authorization policy in the last scroll to the bottom basic authentication access so here if you see a uh, condition if the network access authentication is passed by the RA user then use the any connect profile or which profile to be used right so here we are binding this RA user identity based on the authentication and then uh, using the uh, any connect profile or the authorization profile to push the different parameters to the RA clients so these are the four things that we need to uh, add on to the Cisco IC server from a RA client perspective. So whatever the umbrella SIG policy has been applied, those are applicable to both employee at work as well as the remote users. So before we go to the uh, remote access machine, let's look at the uh, the user at the office. If he is trying to access the content, if that has been blocked by the umbrella SIG or not. So this is my uh, the user machine at the office here on the browser. And I'll try to access the the gambling site here, and it should be blocked by the umbrella C. So as you can see here, this you'll see this this site is blocked due to the content filtering by the umbrella C. So the intent here is to show that whatever the the policies that you can apply to the the LAN users or the campus users, now those same policies will be applicable to the remote access user as well. Now. We'll go to the remote access user machine and from there we'll verify the same gambling site and we'll verify if the even the remote access users has been blocked. So it's time to you know go to the RA client and try to connect to the SD1 RA head end. This is our SD1 R user in this case. So we have the Cisco Any Connect install here so on the user RA client machine. So now we'll try to connect uh, to the Cisco Any Connect client. Open the Cisco Any Connect client. Select the SD1 RA head end profile here. Cisco 8500 RA head end and try to connect. It will prompt for the username and password. And remember, you have to use the credentials that we have added onto the Cisco I server. So in this case, we have added admin one and password, and it should be able to connect to the VPN, establishing VPN, and now it's connected to the VPN. So now once it's connect to the VPN, let's let's verify a few parameters on the any connect client software here. So if you go to this is any connect client, click on the settings. The first thing will check the status over you. So here you can see that different parameters, you can see the uh, RA head and server IP address. So in this case, SD1 RA head and WAN interface IP address. Now, if you go to the VPN part here, 
under these statistics. So here the state is connected and under the address information, you will see what is the IPv4 address has been assigned to this RA, RA client. If you check the route details next to it, we can see the default route here in, in the sense that it is the full tunnel. Now, since the RA users is connected to the uh, VPN on the sd wan RA head end, let's try to access the one of the application servers sitting into the data center or even behind the uh, sd wan RA head end. So before that, I'll show have the application server sitting behind the sd wan RA head end device. The so server IP address is 10.1.18.13. This is my enterprise application server. And, and we also have one of the files that the users can download from this server. Now, we'll try to access this application server from the remote access client. So let's go back to the R user client machine. I'll open the browser here and I'll try to access enterprise application server. My enterprise application server IP address is 10.1.18.13. Now this RA user can access this application server. Let's try to download the file from that server here. Yes, and it can also download the file. It means that now the RA users can access the uh, corporate servers uh, which are inside the data center. The other thing that we want to verify is once they are land onto the sd one RA hidden device, from there it is using the umbrella SIG tunnel to go to the internet or to access the SaaS applications. I'll go to the another tab and we'll try to access one of the content categories that we have blocked. So I'll just try to access one of the gaming sites here, AAA.com, and it should be blocked by the umbrella book. So here you can see that this slide is blocked due to the content filtering by the Cisco umbrella. So it means that once the RA users land onto the RA heading, from there it is a breakout to the umbrella SIG or the umbrella SIG tunnel in order to access the internet. So in nutshell, now these R users can access the corporate enterprise application servers and it also can access the internet securely through the umbrella thick code.